Well, uh, we're joined now by another survivor of sexual abuse. He's an author and a motivational speaker whose book, Winning Within, is available now. So please walk, welcome Victor Pacini. Good morning, Victor. Good morning. How are you? Thank you. And you two hope to partner up to go to schools and really talk about this message. But I want to hear your story. When were you abused? I was, uh, I was eight years old when it happened, and it was a friend of the family who he was about eight years older than me. My parents had trusted uh, his parent, and so I had a sleepover. Um, quite a bit different in age, but uh, the act what, happened. Just you two? Just well, I was in his house. Okay. And um, it happened in his bedroom, and I'll never forget. It was during uh, the holiday season, so the old black and white movie of Scrooge was on TV. Yeah. So that image still is ingrained. It's about you know you get these triggers that just bring you back to that moment. But when the act was finished, I recall as an eight-year-old boy getting up, and I knew in my heart that something was wrong. I, I, I didn't know what it was. I had thought I had done something wrong, and I remember walking to the bathroom and just started crying. But he told me, Victor, don't say anything to your parents because they're going to be mad at you. So I believed them. And then I went home, and my father at the time had the, the old philosophy that children should be seen and not heard. Mm. So I believed him too, and I didn't say anything for 11 years. I kept it a secret. 11, 11 years? 11 years. What were those 11 years like? It was, you know, putting in the back of your mind, and then it would come forward, especially in high school when I started going through my change of growing up, sure. questioning my sexual, sexuality because my first experience was with a male, and going into psychology class talking about deviant behavior going home doing my homework and just start crying for no reason I had no I had no idea what did was your happening. parents ever ask what's the matter Victor no, no, no one ever had a clue because no one ever came to me and said that this is something that could potentially happen yeah. so I felt that I was the only one in the world that this ever happened to and I thought that I did something wrong so keep it quiet and let's sweep it under the carpet mm -hmm. and then right after high school I went to college my roommate left the first day of school so I had the dorm to myself and I just started thinking and all of a sudden I realized that I do not want to live like this anymore I have to talk about it mm -hmm. and uh, I started seeing a counselor and my life changed um, I made a decision at that moment that uh, he abused my body, but I refused to let him abuse my life. Absolutely, absolutely. What happened to him? Did you? Um, he. Um, I, I don't know what happened to him. Actually, I, I know uh, we had. I tried pressing charges, but it was too late okay. at the time, and they brought me in for questioning. Which, when you're a 19-year-old going in for questioning, you have to relive the moment. And I was reliving it as an eight-year-old boy, so it was very emotional for me. And um, nothing ever happened from there, but that's okay. Were you I, able I, to forgive? Absolutely. Really? Yeah, I wouldn't want to see him anymore, quite honestly. But uh, for me to do what I'm doing today, I had to forgive him. Absolutely. You have to. You can't live in the past. you got to... You know, it's not always easy, but you got to just get up from when you fall down and keep moving forward. That's right. the bottom line. Well, thank you to both for coming and sharing your stories and being here. We know you're partnering up. You want to send this message out to school, so all the best with that. We're going to see these two a little bit later in the show. And for more information on Aaron and Victor, you can go to our website.